I got I, I got Chris and Maria Brink from In This Moment. Hello, you guys. Good to see you. Hello. Thank you so much for having us. There's so much going on with your band right now, right? I mean, you got not only the tour that's going on currently within this moment, but you guys got this new album coming up. How exciting for your eighth child to come into the world. How's that feel? I know. We're so excited. I'm excited. And I love the number eight, too, because it's like the infinity symbol. Every time I hear somebody say it, it's still like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe we're at eight. But it is still exciting. Here, it is. We're excited. We right. God Mode. You guys tell me about that. How did God Mode come to be the title of the album and what does it mean? The significance? Well, um, I could start start with this. And just basically when we went into the studio this time, we had a bunch of music that we've been working on, on over the pandemic and stuff, which we hadn't had that much time to actually do anything. It was always pressure, pressure, pressure going into each next album and, and time was of the essence. So we had music, but we, when we got to, to Vegas to start recording, we didn't really have a name and we started working on this first thing, which was just a small idea. It wasn't a full finished song. And I don't know, Maria might've said God mode. Somebody said God mode. And I it said was just, God mode. And then you loved it. Cause you said in the it's video like video game games, world, yeah. it sure. limitless and like all limitless powers and all this cool stuff. And so we just were like, yeah, it's cool. both like, yeah. And the song we were working on at the time was really felt like that kind of. And so we, we made that kind of the name of the song. And then it was just like, well, what if we call the whole album that? And then just, it together. makes sense, yeah, as the songs and the, it all started developing and there was this kind of feeling over it all, like, it just felt like that should be the name. Do you guys have kind of a pandemic bubble then where you were like living in this spot, all just kind of being around each other at that time, like really connecting? I, I mean, because that's why a lot of bands were doing it. You wouldn't want to go out. So is that kind of what you guys did as well? Well, no, we weren't together, any of us. Yeah, oh, we're, all, okay. we're all separate. So, so it was, all it was a, basically her and I sending music Ideas back and forth and get actually and, and also writing on the phone together we were actually doing like, yeah we were uh, doing like this with just kind yeah of like, zoom zoom yeah yeah he was sending me ideas i was sending him ideas and it felt really nice the way we were kind of doing it because like he said we weren't we didn't have all this pressure on us there's normally like uh, cool. pressure and all these things so we were just doing it because we felt wanted like we wanted to and we had stuff that we needed to release so it was a really cool process and going into this album we've never had as many as much material as we had going into this album before yeah like so what, that was, really cool. was it still the same process though because i know maria you say at times sometimes you might not have the words yet but you have a feeling or an emotion that you want to get to in a song was it still kind of that vibe yeah it was still kind of that vibe like i had some words but really not tons and um and then for some of the songs like i just was like I, I like to write the melodies first and then kind of fill them in. But there was some words there and some song titles and things like that. The Purge. Yeah. I mean, that in general, the it evokes a lot. I and mean, there's so much there to unpack. Tell me about that song. We'll start. Uh, that was one of the first. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. You guys first, are a perfect team, by the way. Perfect team. I love it. <laughs> I uh, like, like we were saying, I'd been sending her stuff during the pandemic, but it wasn't like I was writing stuff for in this moment. I was just writing things that I was just kind of experimenting. And it, it was actually really cool to not have that pressure of, uh, I'm going to write a song for in this moment, hopefully, sure. real soon. you know, and that, that's a lot of times it kind of takes the fun out of it. So I was just writing for fun. And I was sending her stuff. And this particular thing, she was like, are you kidding me? She texted me back. And it makes me really happy when she likes something I did. Too. Okay. Um, but she was like, this is going to be the first single for sure. And this is so cool. And you could feel it. You could feel it, Maria. You you knew I, it. I start, I start, when I start laughing, because something's like so good, it's kind of different. I like, I, it's really good. I kind of do this like uncomfortable laugh thing. And I did, <laughs> I was like, I can't believe he, he just sent me this. And I wrote him back like, this is so sick. Like, and this was, there's no melody on it. You okay. know? Goals, no nothing and just to have the musical piece alone like make me feel what I was feeling and get all excited I kept listening to it listen to it I was honestly intimidated by it a little bit because it was so good I was like god I gotta like meet that with my vote oh, sure sure and I, so and I was like gosh I hope I, I it doesn't make not make it better you know make it worse every time I do <laughs> I always know it's going to be so much better when she does what she does over it you know of course yeah, lucky enough to do something over it. I just know it's going to be sick. So that's yeah, cool. I've ruined something. So it's not. <laughs> but um, 
But uh, uh, yeah, so I was really excited about it. And then when we went to go do it, you know, the purge is a perfect name for the first single too, because we felt like we had to purge and just oh, yeah. the years of lockdown and just everything everybody went through. And um, I like to focus on positivity and empowerment sure. in people, but that particular song was more of this releasing moment of just all the buildup of how I feel with like when social media becomes toxic, when I watch the news and, and all the politics and everybody's fighting with each other. And sometimes you see humanity, it just kind of felt built up within us. And that song is kind of this purging release of it, you know, to kind of let go of a lot of stuff that I think we had been feeling. But and maybe, maybe we're all effed, like you say in the song. You're just so, you know what I mean? It's great. <laughs> It's truly a, Mary, a parasite, everything. The, the visuals in that song are strong. It's strong. Yeah. So I can tell that, I mean, look, you matched what was going on musically in the vocal. It's beautiful. It's, it's pretty yeah. rad. Yeah, and it's a moment. You know, it's like I do focus on the positive in life, and, and I do encourage people to really, the real message about it is just to find that balance. You know, sure. you can only focus on the news or social media or all these things. It'll eat you alive. You have to balance yourself with Agreed. What, your mental health with anything in your life so or you will think everything's just fucked or you will just give up on it all because it's so negative so you got to focus on your mental health and make sure you feed yourself with people and energy and sources that you know calm your soul and, and give you the contrary to all of that agreed 100 now a question for the two of you but separate i, I want to hear two different answers here hopefully that when when you guys are in the studio and you're working on a song, and you're putting all these hours in, how do you both individually know when the song is done, when you don't have to touch it anymore, when you know that's it, it's done? Well, I have a good answer. Yeah, you answer. To, to me, it's almost never done. You just kind of stop at a certain point. Sometimes you can ruin it by going too far. Sure. But there's actually a couple of tracks on this album where I'm, I'm telling her, like, every time it comes on, I'm like, oh, if I would have just... <laughs> one kick so yourself a little hurt. bit sure sure yeah, it's like that, but i mean you kind of usually know sometimes you are left with um there's one song i wanted to get on the album it was a a cover that we're going to release actually sure afterward with it as like a as a re, as a re-release or whatever but um so there's always that moment after but i think we know when it gets close yeah. where i'm very passionate though i'll go through like every single word and i'll be like the third you in the fourth thing <laughs> just put a tiny bit of a reverb on it. So sure, I'm sure. Very, very passionate. But um, Kane was absolutely amazing with the whole yeah, process. The process was great. Kane Shuriko and um, Kane's yeah. great. Kane's super talented. You guys got a, a great one there to work with. So that's rad. I'm, I'm, that's a good marriage. You know what I'm saying? Band and producer, rad. Yeah, and we've never just done, you know, we've always had Kevin Chirko in the mix with us, his father. It was always yeah. kind of more of all of us together. And his dad not being involved this time, it did have a different energy, but it still also felt like home because we've been going to them for our whole career. Yeah. And, and just being Kane and us, there was this a little bit of a shift that at first was scary because change is always scary, but winded up just being so rewarding. It did create this kind of new surge with, us and a little bit new a change with everything a little more experimental in a different way because it was a different process and energy you know it was we're really grateful and tyler bates wrote some songs with us on the on the up and coming album too so that's exciting of, really cool yeah. mm -hmm. so once you guys have the the the, the music the, and the lyrics and you're coming out with this great imagery you know the treatment for the video is it important to you that it matches that intensity the same vibe do you want to be as literal with you know what's going on in the song in the video or do you like them to be two separate things but somehow meet in the middle if that makes sense i guess yeah i mean it's always different you know like we tend to do more of our videos and visuals i feel like we don't tend to do like uh storyboards that are like a whole scene happening we do more i feel like like kind of flashing moments and stuff but we did want a little bit more of a storyboard for this one and i've been directing in this moments with uh, robert clay's videos for like the last over 10 years and wow. this director Jensen we've been following he's been doing videos with a bunch of really cool new bands he did some with following in reverse and ice nine kills and um a few others and i he was kept catching my attention i'm like this guy's videos are next level so cool. 
kind of talked to him about doing a video and he wanted to do it. And I came up with like a whole storyboard and he loved the ideas and we worked together and everything. And I loved having him direct it. It was like, he was amazing about every single detail. He is next level. And I really think he's kind of creating this visual shift in the whole scene because he's making like metal and active rock bands look just larger than life. So I think this guy's really talented and I'm excited with the way the video came out. Chris is too, right? And he loved working with him. Yeah. I love it. It's a little mini movie. That's very cool. That's very cool. With it. Yeah. Do you, you guys feel like, you know, now that you're, I mean, I, I don't, the word popular, I guess, but definitely more popular, you know, things are going in the right direction for what you guys uh, probably wanted as, as a baby band at one time. And now think you're reaching a new level. Is it, is it all you hope for? Is it, is it really is exciting to see this movement just keep pushing forward in the fans and it just grows. It grows. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll start with my answer really quick. I, I think it's beautiful to see a lot of bands like us and some of our peers as well. I think Falling Reverse, Ice Nine Kills, Motionless and White. A lot of us bands have been around for a long time and yeah. we didn't just bounce to number one. And a lot of other bands kind of came in and like swung by us. And all of us have been kind of like trucking along slow and steady with our foundation sure. and just slowly building it. So we really feel blessed that we can be where we are in our career on, you said, our eighth album coming out. Yeah, We're yeah. getting the biggest guarantees we've ever got. Sure. We're doing our first co-headliner in an arena with full pyro, with the bit, most fans we've ever had. So we feel like to be where we are in our career and have it be at the top and the biggest now, because some fans come in, they do really big and then they fall or blah, blah, sure. blah. Sure. We just feel like such gratitude and like what a beautiful place to be in you know but we're still hungry so we try to just yeah. be super grateful and just stay hungry so we can keep working on evolving and going to where it is we want to just keep going on to christopher yeah yeah i love it i'm grateful yeah <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. i mean it, it's got to be you know I, I remember talking to zoltan you know death punch years ago and yeah. he was telling me about how they want to take from you know if we've got four semis now we want to make that 10 semis you know the goal to make it bigger and bigger yeah. you guys have it right what's go ahead what were you saying no, i was just saying yeah you got a dream right right exactly yeah. exactly um your your stage setup is always amazing i know people come for many reasons when they come to it in this moment show um does it get difficult to have all those things on stage and just like, you know, you, you got, you guys want to get out there and just rock it be like, okay, I got to get around this damn prop, anything like that, like, you know, drives you crazy or it's just, hey, it's part of what we do now. I mean, it's hard work. That's for sure. sure. And, you know, we're, we're putting on, um, we want to put on a show that you don't see in this scene ever, you know, and that's why we do what we do. We, we want to have something different. We want to have people surprised. We want to have a massive performing arts show. That's like, wow. Even if you mute us, you're going to feel all these feelings. Mm. And you're gonna be like, wow. This is spectacular. So to collaborate the visual stuff with the music, I'm really passionate about it. And, but it's hard work. It's hard work. We oh, have for sure. And like, that's why bands have to be so appreciative and treat your crew good and, oh, yeah. and make sure because they are the backbone to like a band's performance, right? For sure. Yeah, there's definitely lots of challenges to, to yeah. it. And, and we're always fire. pushing the boundaries uh, for ourselves. Everyone's always doing more than the normal person does because of how much we're trying to do all the time. Yeah. But it's very challenging. How many songs of God mode will you guys play live? With this, I mean, this most recent one, I was just checking this out. You guys are still on the road with uh, uh, the Dark Horizon tour right now through August 18 or 19 uh, yeah. with Motionless. So um, are you guys playing some new songs? I know The Purge and I heard what's the second or third track off the record right now. Sacrifice. Yes, yeah. that was it. Sacrifice. So yeah. are there going to be more songs kind of as you guys keep playing here, you know, show after show you add or? Not on this tour because it's not out yet, so we don't want to keep giving it sure. away. But on the next tour, we'll be playing more songs from the new album. Okay. Now yeah. I we have a date in Minneapolis, and I want to bring this up, which is this is a little bit confusing because I know it's supposed to be with Ice Nine Kills, and I and but the show at Myth Myth Live, where you guys have played many times before on yeah. November four, it says yeah. Avatar is playing with you guys. Can you guys clear uh, that up? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a it's an off date. We're, we're basically. <sighs> playing some a few shows on that tour you know with this other support bands when ice nine is going to play with metallica, metallica. yeah uh okay i got it i yeah, can't wait i can't wait 
Yeah, so we'll all be there except for Ice Nine. <laughs> okay, okay. So yeah. do you guys? Do you guys pay? I mean, you pay attention to other bands that are up on you know uh, on the yeah. scene right now. Besides like Ice Nine Kills and ones that you're touring with, do you guys get to handpick some of these bands a little bit now that you're at a certain level? Like, we want to work with them because again, we they, only they... handpick them. Nobody. We're a very um, type of band that no, people don't tell us what to do. I love it. Yeah. We uh, we we. We, when you're doing a co-headliner, however, you have to also respect what the other band wants on. So you have to both agree on the artists that are opening for the show. And But we are definitely passionate about everything we do and all the details. And we're not a band who's told what we to are, do. We definitely yeah. go over every band that, that's supporting us. And yeah, we, that's why you should be nice to people that you meet on tour. <laughs> agreed, man. That we makes really sense. We list of bands and we're like, are they cool? We like them. They're really cool. And <laughs> that's really cool and you just never know and then sometimes you see them you know say hey we love this band we want to work with them in the future yeah. sleep token maybe yeah right you guys work on our last tour and so many beautiful things are happening i knew they were going to be huge like they're so amazing do you get to i mean because they seem so reclusive did they even get to, you guys get to hang with them or is that a no-go or is that a, a thing you guys don't talk about if you do know who they are kind of a deal <laughs> To meet people and all of the things, but we're very respectful to people's sure. art. So that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm excited to see you guys. It's gonna be so great. This tour is awesome for you. You're doing the right things. You guys know that. You've been in the game for a long time now, and it, just watching you guys evolve has been one of my favorite things because I've been a fan for a long time. So yeah. again, I can't wait for the new album. That's gonna be awesome. Yeah, we're, let's talk to you again when the new album comes out. And thanks for caring, and we appreciate it. everyone. You know, it's like. You, it's we're just so grateful we really are like we just keep trying to experiment and try new things and create new stuff and the fact that people care and we keep continuing to have this happen is just we love it we're grateful god mode october 27 maria chris thanks for your time yeah. so much you guys i'll see you very soon we'll see you soon okay take care bye-bye